Praise God. Jesus bless this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, y'all. We got Google Meets tomorrow, which is Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then Sunday. We have two on Sunday. One at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and one at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Um, we're going to do a little bit of what the last video is I put up that says it's called Google Meets. Um, I put I gave you a little bit of uh, exercise to do two days ago. Go look for it. And bring that Sunday with you to both classes, both of them. Okay, and um, we're going to go over it a little bit, maybe tomorrow night if we have time. And then 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sunday night, a little bit of class, then we have movie night. So it's not going to be much less than Sunday night. Just going to talk a little bit about it, and then we have movie night. Okay, Google Meets. Code is the same, R-A-O-U-B-O-F-M-V-I. There it is right there. You can look on the website, JesusDoers.com, for all that information. Okay? All right. Trust and truth. Daddy God, bless this message in Jesus' name. Okay, so trust and truth go together, right? It's hard to trust someone who doesn't speak the truth or whose truthfulness is questioned, right? We have good reason to question many. That's in our world today, right? Be careful what I say here. To, to doubt the truthfulness of their words, the sincerity of their motives, and the genuineness of the characters of many of them, right? Yes. We're living in days that reflect the words of the prophet Isaiah, who wrote, And justice is turned back, and righteousness stands far away. For truth has stumbled in the streets, and uprightness cannot enter. Yes, truth is lacking, and he who turns aside from evil makes himself a prey. Isaiah 59, 14 and 15. So God stands in contrast to this rising tide of lies and deception in our world, stands God himself. Okay? And we desperately, desperately need to know him as the God of truth. Because Jesus said knowing the truth does what? Sets us free. Right? It sets us free. So what a breath of fresh air it is to meet someone who genuine, who's genuinely honest, right? Real and truthful. God is such a person. As you're learning in Google Meets, if you've been following the videos, he's a person. Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, person. And God is such a person. You know, you got this, uh, Deuteronomy 32, 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all of his ways are justice, a God of truth, and without injustice. Righteousness, I mean righteous and upright is he. Deuteronomy 32, 4. You got Psalms 119, 160. The sum of thy word is truth. And every one of thy righteous ordinances is everlasting. You got John 1, 17. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Okay. You got 1 John 5, 20. And we know that the son of God has come and has given us understanding. Right. Praise God. In order that we might know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Dissect that scripture, y'all. 1 John 5.20. What does he want you to do? He wants you to have understanding of him. How do you get that? By, by obeying him. By really giving your life to him. By submitting to him and getting in his word like we do here all the time. Studying it. But, but... Study it because you have a hunger for him and you just want to know his word. And you're like, as you find out the things he's telling you to do, start obeying him, y'all. If there's already stuff you know he's told you to do, you're not doing it. I really urge you to do it. Okay. He said to be in him, in him, in him. If you're not being truthful yourself to God, you're not in him, y'all. Obey the Lord. All right. Jesus described himself in John 14, 6 this way. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. All right. Either that's the most arrogant statement ever uttered on earth or the words of a madman, right? Or it's the absolute truth. Jesus didn't merely just say he was an honest man or, or that he spoke the truth. He said he is the truth. And his resurrection backs up his claims, y'all, about himself. All right, Jesus indeed is the truth. So he's, cap so he's incapable. 
He is not capable of lying. Okay, he will not lie. He can't. He can't. There's no sin to be found in him. When he opens his mouth, y'all, he speaks the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. He is truth. All right? That means we can stake our lives on his word, y'all. You can stake your life on it. You can stake your eternal destination on the words of Jesus Christ. That's the good news because our lives do indeed depend on his word. Okay? So many times we find ourselves looking at the word of God and thinking, I wish I could be true or I just wish I could believe that, right? Like when we've been through painful trials or traumatic times, our faith level may be quite low, right? When you're going through hard times, man, your faith level drops dramatically. You know, we fall real easy. We, we, we fall prey to doubt. We become double-minded and unstable in all of our ways, right? In that kind of a state, we see little, if any, evidence of answered prayer, so the enemy's discouraging us from even trying. All that happens when you hit the bottom, y'all. Whatever's going on in your life. That's what starts happening. We shut our Bibles with a sigh and wonder, you know, how is it that others have such strong faith? So if this has been your struggle, I got some good news for you. I've, I'm in that struggle myself, y'all, every single day. And I'm here every single day giving you that good news. You don't have to allow your mind to be bullied around by the devil's deadly duo of doubt and deception anymore, y'all. No more. Why? Well, let's look at what God's word says about you. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. How about Hebrews 10, 16? This is the covenant that I will make with them after those, says, after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws upon their heart. What's that mean? That means you know his laws and you obey them because what's in your, what you do and what you say is what's coming from your heart. So if you're obeying God's laws, y'all, he knows you love him. Let me read it again. Hebrews 10, 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws upon their heart. And upon their mind, I will write them. For those of you that think God's laws don't exist today, uh, you better go read Hebrews 10, 16 and study it, dissect it, understand it, pray, and then repent. Okay. He said, I will put my laws upon their heart. And on your mind, he will write them. That means you always think about him. They, the four, first thing on your mind is to want to obey God and his word, y'all. I encourage you to do that. All right, John 16, 13. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. All right, 1 Corinthians 2. 15 and 16. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he should instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2 16. Let's sum up. Let's sum up what uh, these verses are saying here. So in Christ, God has given you a sound mind, and, and upon that mind, he reveals to you his truth. He reveals. You don't get in that Bible, y'all, and understand it with your common sense. Can't do it. It's closed off to common sense. Understanding of the word of God's closed off to common sense. The only thing, the only revelation you're going to get in God's word of understanding it is the Holy Spirit. So he reveals his truth. So when you live by the Spirit's power. And again, you don't live by it if you're not obeying it, okay? When you obey the Lord, your God, and all His commands, you're living by the Spirit's power. You're remaining in, abiding in, walking with, following, all that, okay? So when you live by the Spirit's power, He guides you into the truth, 
and enables you, he enables you to function with the very mind of Christ. Okay, he enables you to examine and understand things around you with clarity. I told you, one of the things we'll learn in seven realities is you will learn to hear God speak to you through your circumstances. And your circumstances may seem mighty, mighty bad, y'all. It may be the worst thing ever happened to you. But you will understand what God is trying to tell you through them and you'll know where you need to go. You'll know how to respond when you are abiding in him. It's real important, y'all. You're able to walk by faith in the Father and in his word because that is how Jesus lived. And you have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16. All right, your mind, y'all, is the main battleground where an intense war is being waged for, for control of your soul. You need to understand that because you have the mind of Christ. You don't have to surrender your thought life to the devil, y'all. And this is very critical for you to understand this. You're not a hopeless case. I've heard many of you say I'm hopeless. You are not a hopeless case. You just got to make a decision. You're going to obey God or you're going to obey yourself, right? You're not doomed to be plagued by harassing, accusing, lustful, or even deceitful thoughts for the rest of your life when you got the mind of Christ. There is freedom, y'all, in Jesus Christ. And that freedom results in peace of mind, all right? A lazy, passive view of the Christian life ain't going to cut it, y'all. Ain't going to cut it. God will not win this battle without our cooperation. You got to cooperate. We have to assume responsibility for our own thoughts, y'all. Just like the Bible says, let's look at it. Second uh, Corinthians 10, 5. Take every, he's talking to you. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and examine it. In the light of the word of God, under the guidance of the spirits, he's telling you, get yourself up, open up your Bible, make sure you're living your life according to it, not arguing with God, y'all, saying, oh, that's not for today. You know, no, no, that's not what Jesus did. No. Let's read it again. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and examine it in the light of the word of God, under the guidance of the spirit. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. How about... Um, there's a couple here, Philippians 4, 8 and John 8 verses 31 and 32. Reject the lies and choose something you got to do. Reject the lies and choose to dwell on the truth. That means get your face in it and read it and study it, y'all. Because the truth is going to set you free. And when you live by the truth, you're obeying it. Yep. The Bible says it sets you free. How about uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2? Make a continual, don't stop. Make a continual practice of renewing your mind through the word of God. We do it every single day here. I make sure of it, y'all. Make a continual practice of renewing your mind through the word of God. For that is the way your life is transformed. And we are to live a transformed life. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He comes in and transforms your life. Okay, you guys? So important. Take those scriptures and uh, declare and decree them in the name of Jesus and live your life by them. All right, what I want you to do, read those scriptures. Write them down. I don't know this thing. Write it down. Get your notebook. Here's your notebook. Write that scripture down, whatever. I mean, 1 Corinthians, whatever. Uh, whatever the verse is, I just called out to you. Write it down. Read it. Read it. Pray first. Read it. Now, write down what it means. What is it telling you? Write it all out. What does it mean to you? What it means? What is it telling you? What do you understand that scripture saying? Write it all out. Don't shorthand it. Get it all out there. Okay? Write it out. Then put an am doing list here and a need to do list there. Okay. What are you doing in your life. That you know you're doing. That lines up with that scripture. Write it down. Well I am reading more. Maybe you say I'm reading. 
Um, I'm starting to go to studies more. I'm going to studies. You know, but okay, write it all down. What you are doing that lines up. Now, what do you know you're not doing that line, that the scripture says you're supposed to do? Maybe you're reading the Bible, but you're not studying it like this. So I need to study the word. You hear you go to class, but are you actually doing it? Do it. Write it down. Maybe you don't obey God in everything. Write that down. I need to obey God in everything. If you could think of everything, write the list out, man. And right here is where he's going to learn to transform your life. You're going to let God because now you know you need transformation. It's in your face. Here God's encouraging you. Good job. Here you're learning to hear God yourself. And here you're actually in the word. Here is where transformation needs to take place. Okay, let him help you get that stuff moved over there. In the name of Jesus, okay? All right, y'all, thank some of you so much for what you've done for this ministry and for what we're doing in Africa and everything else. Thank y'all so much. I know, well, thank you for obeying God in that, okay? And um, don't forget, Google Meets tomorrow night, which is Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then we have it two times on Sunday, okay? And then I'll tell you another video videos the rest of the day. Okay, so come to that, y'all. Google Meets, Google Meets, Google Meets. Bring your friends. Anybody can come. But I ask you to come. Please be respectful, y'all. Please be respectful. It is church. It may be on the internet. It doesn't matter. It's church. We're studying the word. Be uh, respectful of the other people in the room. Everybody's there with their own problems and stuff. Everybody's there to get a, a, a message from God. So be respectful. Make sure you understand other people want to talk. They don't, they don't come in the room just to listen to one person. They all want to talk. They all got things to get out. It's fellowship. Be respectful of people, y'all. I welcome you to come, but if I see disrespect, I won't let you in. Okay? No disrespect. Expecting God. No curse word, foul language. No interrupting. None of that stuff. All right? Respect the Lord, y'all. Respect his house. In Jesus' name. Again, anything y'all need to know is in the description on the video, or you can look on our website, which is www.jesusdoers.com. It don't cost you a penny to go there, y'all. Go check it out. All right. See what we're about. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Again, thank you again. God bless you.